themes and finally come bringing it all together and presenting to a scientific community of other researchers what you've done and why what its merit is and and really getting the feedback there so um, so that's what iGEM means to Sinberg. We believe in that model of research, absolutely. And we um, are um, interested in expanding it as much as we can um, in, into our daily, all of our research, modeling it that way. I mean, not that there's not a, a we will always have mentored research. We will always have the other model ongoing. And there is, there's, a, um, there's many students that Sinberg supports that do that kind of research in the summer, but we think the iGEM model is, is really an exciting one and a great way to prepare students in particular for graduate work because it really gives them an idea of what it's like to be, a, it gives an undergraduate a much more clear idea of what it's like to really go up to the next level in, in their understanding of how to do research, cognitive skills, you know, all of the, the sort of higher level thinking skills that need to go on when you're a graduate student. Yeah, so we'll see how it all develops. You know, I think Sinberg will always be one thing and iGEM will, will be a separate entity, but I think we'll always have strong ties and they may get stronger or they may become more attenuated and we, we may just sort of be satellites, uh, organizations on one another. I'm not sure of that. Um, I have one more question. Um, I think it's essentially how do you think ethical questions should be incorporated within synthetic biology's work? Um, we can't not address them because We, we can't not address them because the first thing this science asks of anybody that hears about it is, how the hell can you control this? How the hell can you? I mean, it's, it's got incredible uh, potential, but it also has incredible, it opens doors that, are, are, that we, we have to foresee and we have to deal with. Um, and it makes us stronger and it uh, makes us more accountable, and it makes us more able to talk to the world. By addressing these issues, it makes us, it makes us scientists, I'm t now talking, us are really, you know, the Sinberg scientists, scientific community, much more able to engage with the public about, around what we're doing. And um, I, I think it's really, really important. And I think um, that one of the, the, going back to the iGEM model and how great um, that is um, in terms of, of using it as a template for teaching and research. Um, I, I, I know that there's a lot of people working right now on developing an ethics component with uh, iGEM, all kinds of tools that are available both online but also um, doing things like embedding um, yourself, ethics, people who are um, in, in the ethics thrust on the very understanding of what we're doing. I think it's something that distinguishes Sinberg um, and, and that has been integral to our development and, and makes us stronger, for sure, for sure. The dialogues that have gone on, and, and it's been really interesting to see how, talk about clash, clash of cultures and um, interesting things happening out of interdisciplinary brush-ups really ha you see happening among the scientists and the thrust for uh, participants within Sinberg. Um, and um, it helps the thrust for people to learn how to talk science, you know, it sharpens everybody in being close and working closely together and working closely together as we go, not just kind of having the anthropologists come in and then, and then study what happened, you know, but but delivering feedback to us as we go along. This is, you know, where we're at. This is where, we, you know, I mean, just that scientists, in particular engineers, are not very self-reflective very often. 
it's not how they're built, you know. It's one of the marvelous things about them. I mean, I like having come from the humanities. I mean, I always say this about my my own awakening and, and being part now of, of this scientific community, whereas I come from this humanities background. I find it so refreshing the speed at which things go in the sciences. So refreshing how you don't have to have six meetings to decide something, you know, and torture yourself over the ramifications and the blah, blah, blah of everything. It just, you know, what's the problem? How are we going to fix it? That's kind of how people think in this field, you know. Um, and so when you want to get something done, me as an administrator, the best way for me to engage with the decision makers who are the principal investigators is to simply define the problem and already have it worked out in my mind, what is the solution? They don't want to talk about what the problem is for very long. And so having this other culture come in, which actually is all about reflection and engaging in what is happening and what has happened, and then putting it in to some kind of frame of reference as you go along is just so different. But it's, it's good to have the scientists sit down and engage in that. You know, it's good. Um, interesting things happen. And it does change the course of things to do it that way, in a good way. Although not everybody is always not, um, free of frustration <laughs> on both sides. So that's all I'll have to say about that. But no, it's good. It's a good thing. It's a, definitely a strength of Sinberg that we have this work going on. So thank you all for that <laughs> for keeping us honest and you know yeah was there um, anything final you wanted to say that was my last question so um i'm just having a really good time i think people at Sinbrook are having a good time i'm um i'm definitely having a good time in discovering what it is my job exactly is and how to do it well and then you know building partnerships with with people who are doing really great work and trying to bring them in and spread our money as widely as we can and do really good things. So it's, it's all very exciting. Work with great people who really enable this work to happen. Jay Kiesling in particular has been, I mean, one of the things I didn't say about the biotech program when you asked is that Clem called me because Jay told him to call me and felt like together we could make this happen. But even more importantly, Jay said, I'll fund it. <laughs> and so, you know, that's the real thing, to believe in it to the point where you'll find the money. I mean, we, we wrote some grants, but it was so late that we were very unlikely to find funding that late to do a program starting to think about it in March and in Starting it in June, it was unlikely that we would actually get funding, but with somebody like Jay, who's committed to this work and wants it to happen, that, that's, that's a lot. That, you know, and I think that's true with, um, with the thrust for work as well, both the education, the thrust for work, which aren't necessarily totally integral. Well, they are integral to the research, but they can also be marginalized when you're in a race to get to the next step of discovery, you know, and, and they're not, they're taken seriously. So that's, that's, an, that's a real, that makes my job really fun, that it is seen as important and that people are signing on and taking it on and helping to do it, to actually do the work. That's it. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. And I'm going to take the room uh, noise for 20 seconds. Okay, so you're going to cut out a lot.